Hello everyone and welcome to this week's short video tutorial. This will be the third board of chapter 11 in Grandmaster Hurunghua Sandwich Host Defense Treaties. Now, uh, short recap, this was the position that was discussed in chapter 11. Now, in the first board, uh, black could counter with a9 equals to 8. In the second board, black chose to play e3 plus 5. However, neither of these variations uh, were very good at uh, seizing the initiative away from red. So in the third board, black would choose to play r1 plus 1. So a short recap. Pale corner horse cannon, foul chariot, sandwich horse defense, seventh pawn, counter ring with seventh pawn, and red would play r2 plus 6 to attack the horse. Now, at this point in time, in the third board, Black could attempt R1 plus 1 to develop his right chariot very early in the game as a ranked chariot. Now, uh, as can be seen on at this point in time, the only position that uh, the left chariot, the right chariot could be developed would seem to be only this uh, this foul over here at the elephant's eye. So at this point in time, three variations were discussed. The first would be an interesting variation, h8 plus 7, whereby black would be challenged to see whether if he would dare to play c6 plus 5. The second variation would be uh, red attacking with c8 plus 4 for the uh, pawn rank cannon. The third and last variation would be red attacking with the 5-7 cannons. So, in the first variation, red will play h8 plus 7 without any qualms and black will be forced to play the skewer. If he did not make this move, playing the pale corner cannon for the uh, second move would have been made in vain and this would lead to a very big uh, decrease in deficiency of the moves. And since uh, this was played, red would gladly choose to capture the central pawn, daring black to capture the red cannon, which of course black would not dare to do so, and it would be a trade of cannons. If after capturing, black chose to make this move, the capture material, black would immediately threaten to uh, retreat his cannon so that it would be a cost, uh, cannon chariot combination attacking the central file. Red could easily gain back lost material and black could be in all sorts of trouble. So that that is why uh, black would not usually uh, want to get, try to gain material at the expense of giving red a headhunter cannon. So C8 plus 4 was played and black could usually take the opportunity to attack this horse. And one of the ways that red can defend against the uh, menacing black horse, which was prepared to play to capture the red horse and also to play h6 plus 8 or h6 plus 4 for the elbow horse attack, the best way for black uh, for red to defend would be to play c4 plus 1. And uh, by playing so, the black horse would now be halted in his attack. And at this point in time, black would choose to offer a trade of chariots to try to gain control of this very important file. And if uh, red chose to accept, the the horse would have an extra opportunity, if possible, if possible, to attack. Now, at this point in time, it would be ideal for red to accept the challenge. If he tried to capture the black horse. The black horse would retreat and the horses would be linked. Uh, red could not capture the advisor either because this horse would be protecting the advisor. So r4 plus seven equals to 7 or traversing the uh, red chariot would be usually played. And this would, uh, the, sorry I forgot to mention, after h6 minus 8, black could also be prepared to play p7 plus 1 to threaten the red chariot, which is why the red chariot would have to move. But upon moving, 
this cannon will become very vulnerable because black could play r1 equals to 6 to threaten to capture it and the cannon can be protected either by advancing here or protecting in this manner advancing the cannon uh, c6 plus 3 will not be ideal because as mentioned earlier black could gain material by pushing p7 plus 1 hence h7 plus 6 will be uh, the better of two evils at this point in time and uh, uh, black would attack aggressively to try to gain material forcing the chariot to protect the horse and at this point in time black would have the initiative the main reason for black having the initiative is because red would have moved this chariot too many times in the opening phase now this is this would go against one of the basic tenets of shang chi opening theory whereby it is not advisable to move the same uh, move a same place too many times uh, especially early in the game so as can be seen, Black would have developed all, all his major pieces and even got some defense uh, already prepared. So Black would have the initiative. So a short recap: after Black's R1 plus one, Red would play would try to test or sound Black out with H8 plus seven. Now this would be variation one. In variation two. Uh, Red would attack with a pawn rank cannon. Now, the main idea behind this move would also be to target the central pawn, whereby there will be now there would now be two cannons: this cannon and the central cannon, and also the red chariot attacking reds, attacking black's central pawn. And as mentioned in the earlier videos, one of the best ways of countering uh, an attack by the enemy along the central file with with the central cannon will be to counter with a central cannon of your own so this the formation or the opening system now would be similar to the same direction cannons uh, it would not be a good idea for black to play a4 plus 5 or e3 plus 5 because uh, by doing so the rank chariot uh, would become blocked especially if a4 plus 5 were played Hence, uh, this would be the best move under the circumstances for black. After playing c6 equals to 5, uh, red will usually take some time to develop his left flank. And black would uh, command this an important line with r1 equals to 4. Red would continue to attack the black horse, forcing black to defend in this manner. And uh, red would choose to play p3 plus 1 for a pawn trade-off the main idea between uh, behind this move was to allow for development of this right horse because once the pawns were exchanged this horse will be able to move to the riverbank for attack or to assist in any attack now at this point in time it was suggested or advised uh, in the book for black to play uh, r4 plus 6 now this is usually not seen or advocated in opening, uh, opening in the opening phase, because uh, the enemy's cannon rank is usually heavily guarded, and the chariot, uh, any chariot or, or any other piece that moves the enemy's cannon rank, is very vulnerable and susceptible to sneak attacks. However, in this situation, R4 plus six was advocated. Uh, it would not be a good idea for Black to try. Uh, to retreat his cannon to attack the chariot uh, in this manner although this would be something similar to the uh, sandwich horse def uh, screen horse defense uh, one of the most commonly used tactics in a screen horse defense now there was a short variation that was given because if c5 minus 1 were played red would charge the pawn across the river and red would simply move his horse and chariot to the rip file And Red will even choose to uh, try to Red will play very aggressively and capture the central pawn. And at this point in time, Red will gain a central cannon and take control of the central file. If the Red Horse attack, there will still uh, 
play c5 plus 4 to take revenge and although the horse will be sacrificed, red central cannon or headhunter cannon at this point would be a very 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 powerful entity which um, black would have trouble dealing with. So c5 plus 1, uh, c5 minus 1 or retreating the central cannon to the centroid position is not encouraged. Instead, r4 plus 6 was advised, forcing the black chariot to protect the uh, horse in this manner. The horse cannot advance because the cannon will now be capturing, threatening to capture it. And retreating on the horse would be a loss of initiative. So r9 plus 2 will be the sensible move at this point in time. And at this point, only after uh, this was played, should black try to retreat the cannon to the centroid position, uh, threatening to capture the uh, black chariot, forcing it back. And although this uh, variation was similar to the sub variation, there's still a little bit of difference, so please be patient. Now, uh, at this point in time, it would not be a good idea for red to use the uh, horse because if h4 plus 5 were played instead, there will be a skewer at this point and uh, red would be forced to lose material again if, <coughs> if the horse, uh, if red tried to defend with, say, h7 plus 6. Black will gain back lost material and gain a material in the process. So it will be reds 1, 2, 3 versus blacks 1, 2, 3, 4 pieces. So either way, uh, h4 plus 5 should not be played. Instead, red should play c5 plus 4. And after the trade, after the trade, although black would lack a central pawn, the loss of the pawn would be uh, compensated by excellent development of the black pieces, the black cannons and the black chariots I would now have commanded the important lines and uh, this flank was rather empty and vulnerable for attack so black would have a very playable game and this would be very desirable for black going into the big game phase. Hence a short recap in the second variation uh, instead of playing h8 plus 7, red tried to attack with a pawn rank cannon. But uh, it would seem that black would have the uh, black uh, can be satisfied with this variation. So, a short recap uh, r4 plus 6 to force the chariot to a, uh, to a not very ideal position. And after trading material, black would have uh, very mobile pieces on the board and this would be quite favorable for black uh, as the game would proceed into the mid game phase. In the last variation, after r1 plus 1, instead of uh, h8 plus 7 or h8 plus 4, red would choose to attack with this 5-7 cannons. Now, of the three variations, this variation would seem to be the best for red. And since the red cannon was now threatening to capture the black horse by pushing p7 plus 1, uh, there were three sub-variations which were discussed. In the first sub-variation, uh, black would try to resolve this threat by e3 plus 1. Uh, the second sub-variation will be e3 plus 5 and this will be another very lengthy and uh, complicated variation This can be seen over here. Uh, in instead, we shall go with variation 3a, the surface sub-variation. By moving the edge, the elephant to the edge file, if red charged the pawn across the river, the elephant could capture it and still prevent any loss of material. So at this point, it will be advised for red to uh, move his horse to the edge file. 
R2 equals to 3 would not be a very good idea because red would actually help black in developing the major pieces. And as mentioned earlier, uh, the black chariots will now have controlled the throat rank and also the cannon rank and black will simply retreat c6-1 to attack the red chariot. Again, uh, uh, red's 5-7 cannons will the efficiency or threat of the 5-7 cannons, or the, especially the cannon on this valve, would be diminished or resolved by the edge elephant. Hence, R2 equals to 3 would not be a good idea, and instead, uh, red should play H8 plus 9. Now, at this time, black could try to be aggressive. Since the, horse, the red horse has moved, the cannon will now not be protected. So, charging the horse to the riverbank would allow black to threaten with h6 plus 4 to capture the red cannon. And uh, red will play counter aggressively. And another benefit of moving the horse to the riverbank would be to play p7 plus 1 to threaten the red chariot. And as mentioned earlier, because the horse had moved, the cannon on the 7th rank was now under attack and at this point in time uh, black can be satisfied with this position the red chariots would be much better developed than their black counterparts uh, but the issue of the black horse will be a threat that red would have to address uh, very soon uh, this the Pell Corner Cannon will also be another issue because uh, these two cannons are now linked and if Black uh, moved his advisor, the development of the right chariot or the right rank chariot will be an issue. So red, generally speaking, red would have, to, uh, would have much space and the, jet, the slight advantage in this situation. So in variation 2a, e3 plus 1 was played and red could be satisfied with the outcome. In variation 3b, uh, e3 plus 5 was discussed as would uh, seem to be the logical move or instinctive move for most players to make at this, in, this, uh, in similar situations. Again, it would be advised for Red to move his horse to the edge file for development. And it would not be a good idea to play R2 equals to 4 because Black could defend in this manner. And since uh, Red moved, uh, used up one or two moves to develop his left flank, the Black Cannon could would now become a threat by uh, advancing to the pawn rank, Red's pawn rank. Now, it will be suggested or advised for red to play r9 equals to 8. Advancing the central pawn to prevent the cannon from capturing the third pawn, red's third pawn, is not ideal because uh, black could immediately take the chance to play r1 equals to 4 and develop his chariot in this manner. Compress the space or development of red's left cannon, horse and chariot. Now this is one uh, commonly used move that to try to gain material but black would not have to fear because by advancing the cannon over here the red horse would now be blocked from uh, protecting the red cannon and black would also be threatening to capture the red horse. Therefore, usually red would be forced to trade material, but in doing so, the effects of these uh, the red's 5-7 cannons would be, re uh, would be complete, completely annihilated. So that is why p5 plus 1 to prevent black from capturing the third pawn is not advised. Instead, red should try to play r9 equals to 8 before the black chariot could advance to the third rank uh, to the pawn rank sorry and however in doing so black will be given the chance to play c2 equals to 7 
to capture the pawn and target the red elephant forcing the red elephant to the edge file where it would also uh, discourage the black pawn from advancing and after uh, e3 plus 1 was played black would take the opportunity to develop his left chariot and at this point in time uh, black can be very satisfied with this situation it would be very playable and red would not have gained much uh, so this variation would be to uh, black's advantage and that is why r2 equals to 4 would not be a good idea so at this point in time uh, one way to develop the left chariot would be to play r9 equals to 2 so that black would still have the option of uh, retreating his cannon to attack uh, the red chariot should it move to this file r9 equals to 8 would be played by red and at this point in time it would be advised for black to retreat the cannon on the second file c2 equals to 1 uh, was not a good idea because r2 equals to 3 could be played and once the cannon uh, and once black did not uh, lost sorry if once black lost the opportunity to play c2 minus 1 uh, black would now be would have to contend with a very cramped position so red would have a nice advantage going to the mid game so that is why it would have been better for black to retreat his cannon immediately and at this point in time uh, this move was suggested in the in Grandmaster Hurunga's book whereby Red would try to switch uh, or change his formation to adapt to the situation on the board now this move uh, is very interesting and quite ingenious because by playing c5 equals to 4 uh, black would be discouraged from playing h7 plus 6 if it did a trade or red could play r2 equals to 4 to gain material and the situation be quite complicated that is why uh, c5 equals to 4 played because if it not red could attack with h7 plus 6 and once the horse was at the riverbank it would be prepared to play h6 plus 4 or to capture the red pawn and either way the horse will now become a legitimate threat so c5 equals to 4 as a prophylactic move to discourage the horse from moving to the riverbank is advised and black would be better off continuing his attack concentrating his attack on this file r2 equals to 6 to try to trade cannons would not be a good idea even though this cannon would now become a major pain in the ass so after trading cannons Uh, red would charge the pawn across the river it would not be a good idea to play h6 plus 4 because the black would uh, sorry red would take the opportunity to move his cannon to the pale corner position now once uh, the cannon was moved here as can be seen the black horse would not have any good intersections for further development if it uh, moved to the fourth uh, black's sixth file the red the red chariot would be waiting neither can it advance so red would actually be better in this situation therefore h6 plus 4 was not a good idea and black could even gain an extra pawn by playing h6 plus 7 and red would continue to play r8 uh, plus 6 the idea behind this move was to capture the pawn and capture the uh, black horse because if the cannon move red would simply capture the black chariot and red would have gained material in the process this would still be a rather complicated position but red would ge uh, generally speaking red would have the slight advantage hence c2 equals to 7 is suggested as can be seen red would attack aggressively 
forcing black to retreat the horse to the centroid position. Now, black would have to contend with a very, very, very cramped position. However, after uh, the goal of forcing the black horse to the centroid position was achieved, red should retreat his cannon to his pawn rank to protect against any attacks by black on this file. RA plus 2 is not advisable. Now RA minus 3 will be even worse because the chariot would in essence still be in a closed position with not many intersections for development. So the best or the better move would be to retreat the cannon either to this rank or the pawn rank. However, if R8 minus 2 were played, P3 plus 1, uh, and red, because the red pawn had crossed the river, uh, the black chariot will now be threatening to capture the red chariot. And either way, uh, black would have managed to uh, concentrate some pieces on uh, red's third file and black would have a very nice uh, game ahead because of this horse fork threatening to capture the chariot and the cannon. So that is why R8-2 would not be a good idea and instead sorry uh, retreating the chariot back to the pawn rank would be better. An offer of a trade of chariots, which black would of course deny, and black would choose to trade cannons. And as can be seen, uh, the position of the red pieces and the position of black uh, pieces would be roughly equal. Uh, it would be a rather even game. Black would be threatening to attack the elephant or horse in this same foul but there was already adequate position and red could simply move and could link the elephants up and uh, his defense would be uh, more or less adequate so it would be a rather even game so that is why uh, e3 plus 5 and e3 plus 1 uh, if compared would seem that uh, red would be better with e3 plus 1. So a short recap, uh, if you can follow the cursor over here, in the third file, <coughs> in the third file, or third board, sorry, black would choose to play r1 plus 1 for the rank chariot, and there were three variations, uh, h8 plus 7, c8 plus 4, and c8 equals to 7, and amongst these three, uh, red would seem to fare better with the 5-7 cannons. Now, uh, this is the third last part of the opening section in Grandmaster Ho Rong Hwa's book and uh, this is also one of the more complicated bots in this chapter. The next two bots will also contain many many variations and even more sub variations. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, today's very short video tutorial. Uh, we have been trying to explain certain concepts as best as I can. Uh, I hope that newcomers to Shang-Chi will be able to learn more or know more or see more uh, technical combinations that would uh, assist them in their own gameplay. And if you like the work that I've done, please subscribe to my channel and I'll try to do as many videos and explain as many explanations as possible. Thank you, have a good week ahead and please subscribe. Thank you.